we got an agenda, an actual agenda or something? No. All right. Uh, first, I want to thank all y'all for coming out today. We did. Have Excuse one. my little raspy voice. It's that you know that time of year, but um, <clears throat> like I said, I want to thank all y'all for coming out. This is uh, the, the first of the calendar year of, of our uh, coffee talk events uh, for the the Economic Development Committee of the Bay Area Chamber. Uh, I'm Jordan Church. Uh, I'm a manager with Pilts Williams LaRosa and Company CPA firm. Uh, tax season, so if y'all need need anything with that, you know who to call. Uh, but but I'm also the vice president of the Economic N Development Committee with the Bluxy Bay Area Chamber of Commerce. Um, we put on a, a couple of different events, uh, this being one of them, uh, the, our, our coffee talk series, generally once a quarter, uh, and this is by far our most successful one. We also do meet and eats, kind of gives you a little information to kind of help grow and, and, and strengthen your business, so be on the lookout for those. Uh, another event that we have this year, uh, it's going to be our first go this year, and we want it to be as big a success as possible, so uh, y'all please come out and, and, and support, is our um, our first annual poker run, pub crawl. Uh, it's going to be Friday, March the 15th, here in downtown Biloxi. It's going to be five local you know, uh, area, uh, businesses down here, all within walking distance. Um, it's $20 per card, and, and you got a chance of winning half the pot, so it, it's going to end up being a pretty good chunk of money. So check that out. Um, we also have a few other events uh, as far as the Bucksy Bay Area Chamber as a whole. Um, next, uh, this Sunday, we have the Parade uh, here in downtown Biloxi. Next Thursday, we have Bay Connects with Margaritaville and Lost Key Bar. Uh, then we have a ribbon cutting for Next Home Front uh, March the 8th. And, and then, obviously, I just told you all about the poker run. Um, I'd like to thank uh, Tina for helping get this together, our executive director of the Bucks Bay Area Chamber. I want to thank uh, Miss Lucy for helping us get it all pulled together, um, and all of our council members for, for being here today. Um, I'd also like to thank Mark Seymour with Seymour Engineering for sponsoring. That's, a, that's this great food that y'all ate this morning. And also uh, Dixie Newman with Jacked Up Coffee. She provided the coffee. Um, so uh, I don't want to prolong it any more than I have to, so I'm going to go ahead and get started. Um, and I believe Robert's going to go first because he's, he's got to get the court. So. Do we need to open a meeting? We need to open it. Yeah, it's a official meeting. Yeah, uh, for the purpose of um, uh, this, we have more than a quorum, so we're going to go ahead and open it up as, a, uh, as an official meeting. Uh, I need a motion to open this meeting up. So uh, moved. Second. Moved by Dr. Tisdale. Second by Mr. Glavin. Any questions? All in favor? 5-0. Much carry. Yo, yo, yeah. <laughs> Thank you. <clears throat> Excuse me, I'm going to have to leave as soon as I give my little what's happening presentation. And I want to thank the Commerce Chambers for being out here and hosting this, as well as all of you guys and the rest of the council. And I know my speech professor when I was in college told me not to thank everyone because you're wasting time you could be using to say important things, so I must not have a lot of things important to say. Um, obviously, that's... <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, your time's up. <laughs> I was also told not to get on the carpet. <laughs> you know, right now in Biloxi, it's a, it's a good time. Since we, the majority of us have been elected, all of us other than Nathan, for the past five years, we've been trying to catch up on doing things, especially infrastructure-wise in our wards, that haven't been done for a long time. I know in my ward, it's been decades since some of the roads have been paved in that ward, and we've been paving at a pace that we could possibly handle with our manpower and our finances, and we just bonded. Um, some more money for the city so we could apply it to municipal paving. So I look forward to this next fiscal year getting some of these roads paved that have been neglected for a long time. But there's a lot of things that are going on in Biloxi, and not just the new Waffle Houses that are coming in. I was just informed that we have more Waffle Houses in Biloxi than McDonald's. That's, I don't know if that's something to brag about or not, but that's... <laughs> You know, this will be the first year also in Ward 4, and I hope you guys will all come out, that we'll have a, a full summer with the new bait shop and the filling station down at the Causeway Park. If you haven't been down there, the park is beautiful. We still have a few improvements I think that we need to make, um, but we're working on it. We're going to do some improvement projects 
on the parks across from the Margaret Cherry Library. We're gonna we're gonna we're working on putting together state of the art dog park. Excuse me for they're far less important than you guys. Um, working on putting a state of the art state of the art dog park over there and restoring the baseball field so that so we have some more places for the youth to practice and play and even some people that aren't really youths anymore. But if there's any questions that anyone has regarding Ward 4, I'd love to field those right now as I won't be here for anything else. Mr. Christie in the back. Is there any motion on uh, kids in the that And uh, we've talked about that and we've spoken with the uh, director, Sherry Bell, and we have looked at I have not followed up with as much um, effort as you probably would like of regarding the children's play um, equipment that we are trying to put out there, but I'll get with Sherry and we'll follow up more on that. And I'm sorry, that I hope I didn't drop the ball for, for you. Okay. Ward 4 is Pops Ferry Road from Pass Road up to about where businesses start. It's the majority of those neighborhoods on Pops Ferry Road between Pass Road and, and Tier V Street, the area where the, um, the hardware store is and sweet stuff. But if there's no further questions, I apologize. I, I have one, Councilman. Ooh. I, I do have one. <laughs> <laughs> But talk a little bit about you pickleball because that's that's something in your ward I think that's pretty amazing. I um well, I beat Kenny, um, <laughs> but we have had a resurgence of use for those those tennis courts on Pops Ferry. I mean those things stayed dormant, and we'd have an occasional skateboarder out there. For the most part, that's what they were used for. Um, I know Tom came in and brought pickleball to Biloxi. It may have been here, but I wasn't aware of it until he brought pickleball to Ward 4. And we've resurfaced those tennis courts into pickleball courts. And we have, I don't know, can I say thousands? Is that adequate? I mean, thousands of people. We have gazillions, bazillions, excuse me. I'm. Give me those phones. <laughs> you know, that has brought new life to those parks and, and, and recreational areas across from the um, Margaret Sherry Library. And I think resurfacing those fields like we're t intending on doing and upgrading that dog park is gonna continue that energy in that area. Um, is there anything else you'd like me to you talk about, Kenny? mention our match with Mike. And <laughs> I'll leave that one for you. Yes, thank you for, again for coming. Um, I apologize for having to leave, but I look forward to it next time. We have tentatively, tentatively scheduled it. We, the days that we picked conflicted with some of the Mardi Gras events, so we're picking new events, but it will, it will come up here at the end of March. Yeah, you, yeah you, can't, you can't compete with Mardi Gras. Yes, again, anything else? All right, well, thank you so much for being here, and it was a pleasure. We all have to watch the camera, ladies. Cecilia Walton, ladies and gentlemen, Cecilia Walton. I'm Paul Tisdale, I'm the councilman in Ward 5. This is my second term. You know where Pass Road is. From the Col south of Pass Road, from the Coliseum to Gulfport, is my ward. North of Pass Road, roughly where the Bay Vista Fire Station is, Bradford O'Keefe Funeral Home. North of Pass Road, all the way to the Gulfport, is my ward. It's probably the smallest ward in terms of land area and about 40 percent of the folks who vote in my ward are, live in apartments there are a number of large apartment complexes uh, so having said that if you want my cell number it's 228-297-6800 if you want my email address it's ptisdale1 at yahoo.com uh, a couple of things i have a ward meeting next wednesday week from today at 6 o'clock at the Donald Snyder Center on Pass Road. It's open to the public. It'll focus on Ward 5 uh, events or activities or projects. And one of those concerns is always spring break, spring break and the traffic plan. So that, I know that's going to be on the agenda. 
Additionally, there's a proposed road that may or may not come up in the near future that would run from Pass Road by the old Mississippi Music Store that would go due north and tie into, I think it's Eula Switzer Road that uh, runs east and west and, and terminates at the intersection by the community college. So the community college is looking at uh, the possibility of constructing a new road there. So the folks in Edgewater Estates <clears throat> along Westview Drive in particular have some concerns about that. That will probably come up. The only other thing that, that I have to share with you is folks in my ward, uh, if they'd like to receive my Sunday e-blast, I've been doing it for about a year, just send me an email or text me with your preferred email address. I'll add you to the list. I push out about 300 every Sunday and kind of pulls a number of sites together, particularly agendas along with issues that may be on the council agenda that might be interesting to folks in Ward 5 particularly. Having said that, I'm happy to answer any questions. Who does my hair? I will not answer. <laughs> I don't have many options there. <clears throat> and never, never let Robert Deming cut your hair when he's mad. Let me put it that way. Pat. Yeah, there's a difference of opinion among the council. Um, <clears throat> excuse me. Short-term rentals are, are really uh, a hot, hot topic and, and a number of things are coming to a head and that's not just true here in Biloxi, it's true across the United States. And uh, what we had yesterday was a zoning change from Oak Shores condos and it used to be, I think, Oakmont Apartments for those of you local yokels, but about uh, seven or eight years ago, they, they went condo and they've sold these units. And uh, that was in an RM30 zone, I believe, which is uh, what it was originally zoned for, for an apartment complex, residential multifamily, RM30. And uh, when the owner or owners of that property decided to sell the units as condos and flip them to condos, there was no zoning change request at that time. There was really probably no need to. Uh, hindsight is, is great. However, uh, in my opinion, what should have happened is it should have been rezoned at that time. So if you're buying a condo there, if it's in a commercial zone now, according to the local ordinance, you can operate a short-term rental. Uh, not a problem. To operate lawfully, you need to come in and get a permit which very few people have done. There are hundreds of short-term rentals operating in the city. 16 are permitted, okay? So, and it's not the idea that we're losing a bazillion dollars worth of revenue, because we're not. <clears throat> However, RM20 and RM30 zones, where apartment complexes are, you can operate short-term rentals only as a conditional use currently which means it's got to go to the Planning Commission and be approved, and then it comes to the Council for approval. So if you're in a single-family residential area, short-term rentals are prohibited. But I guarantee you there's a lot of short-term rentals in uh, single-family residential areas, particularly within walking distance to the beach, that are offered as short-term rentals, which is a violation of the ordinance. If you're in a commercial zone, we changed that ordinance, as I said earlier, about a year, 15 months ago. It's not a problem. All you have to do is come down and get a permit. But the RM20 and RM30 apartment complexes, many of them now, some of them now condos, that's where it gets a little tricky and hairy. And that's why you've seen people who purchase one or more than one condo in uh, Oak, Oak Shores, that's why they were jubilant when they left yesterday, because what we did was change the zoning from RM30, where none of them got, uh, got approval for a conditional use, nor did they get a permit. And once the zoning changed, and it will within, I don't know, 30 or 60 days, whatever the date of publication is, we have to publicize that, then it'll be commercial, community business. They're no longer required to have a conditional use. All they'll have to do at that point is go in and get a, a permit to operate in the city. But it's important to have these short-term rentals 
on the city's radar, so to speak, because in the ordinance it says they're, among other things, they're annually inspected by the fire department. And that's not occurring. So that's kind of where we're, the city's kind of behind the curve in all of this. And we all have our different opinions. But uh, my concern is for the folks who may be in these apartments complexes. Uh, the next one that, that that's, I think is going to come up is Cypress Cove, which is the old Saxony Apartments, a block west of White Avenue. I think there are 48 units. I think maybe 26, 27 are now privately owned. Those were apartments for 35 years, 40 years. They're now condos. They're being marketed to condos. More than half have been bought up. And what these condo owners have done is they've now changed the covenants, which before prohibited short-term rentals. Now the covenants read that they are permitted. But you've got maybe 20 folks who have been living there for years in an apartment. They have had nothing to do. They've done nothing illegally, and now they have party goers. Uh, on particular weekends, operating illegally. And part of the issue is the city really does not have a good, in my opinion, a good enforcement procedure at the moment. I'm not sure that process is clear. So I just leave it at that. But it's, it's going to be an issue, not just in Biloxi. I think Ocean Springs limits the number of short-term rentals they have there. But I guarantee you, you go to Airbnb, or uh, what is it, Home Away, and some of the VRBO, some of these, uh, you'll find hundreds that are being advertised. They no longer say Biloxi. They say the Biloxi area, or, or, the, or close to Biloxi, or close to beaches, you know, the mousetrap, smarter mice kind of thing. My concern is that, that people operate lawfully and that these uh, short-term rentals are safe and, and that they comply with the ordinance, that's all. I'm looking for our attorney who's not here. There, there is. Jordan there looks. Is, but it's, it's very there, there is, but when I, when I said that enforcement may be unclear or may not be effective, uh, that's part of it. I don't know what it is. I'm sure there is. 50 bucks. 50 bucks a day. 50 bucks a day. You know, and on a good weekend, if you're close to the beach, if you stay a week, you might pull in a grand. You know. Uh, we're open to suggestions <laughs> because uh, we count on folks to do the right thing, and, and that's what bothers me about all this, just personally. If I'm an apartment dweller and I've lived in Saxony Apartments, when it was Saxony Apartments, for 15 or 20 years, and I'm disabled, or my spouse is disabled, and we're close to Keesler, which is why I bought the apartment, now I'm being squeezed out. It's kind of like uh, Uber's, Uber, when Uber came in, Uber's strategy was come in, operate for about a month or six weeks, get established, and then start the political push to change all the rules, because we've got a motor vehicle for hire authority that uh, regulates the, the motor vehicle for hire, <laughs> okay, here in Harrison County, cabs and so forth. What Uber did was uh, after uh, really giving us a lot of static for about six or eight months. They went to the state legislature and said, hey, we're going to give you a chunk of money. And it wasn't much of a chunk. For some reason, I'm thinking it was $100,000. And they're regulated by the state. So if you have a problem with Uber, we can't help you. OK, same thing with Lyft. But it's, it's kind of we come in, we buy short-term rentals. Excuse me, we buy condos or apartments. We rent them. And then at some point we flip them, and then we operate until we get caught, and then we wait to see if we'll be forgiven, and so far they have. That's my opinion. That's my perspective. All right. They're not bad people necessarily. They're just good people who don't follow city ordinances. I might need their vote. Any other, any other questions that are less laborious to answer? So anyway, and, I, and I'm sorry, I, te I tend to talk too much on these topics, as Vincent Creel will tell you. But I want to be accurate, and usually there are a lot of qualifications on issues like this. There are a lot of ins and outs. Okay? No further questions? Thank you.
Well, good morning, everyone. Uh, my name is Kenny Glavin. Uh, my ward is Ward 6, and uh, that runs from Sweet Stuff on Pops Ferry all the way to the D'Iberville line. It goes north up to your mama's house. Not your mama's house, your mama's house. Uh, and then uh, it goes south, uh, meandering along uh, the Biloxi Bay, uh, North Haven, uh, in, in those subdivisions. Um, this is my second term. Uh, on the city council. I enjoy this job tremendously. Uh, a little bit about my background, uh, you know, my family grew up in the seafood business making nets for all the shrimpers and fishermen and selling supplies. Uh, my dad, uh, my biggest influencer, Herb Glavin, uh, he was the owner operator of that thing and he had such an influence on my, my life and uh, not only the fishermen would come into the uh, trawl shop, but uh, you had mayors and councilmen and senators and everything coming and either buying netting to, for decorations or coming in asking uh, for a vote or, or my dad's influence on, on getting votes. And, uh, but he taught me the true uh, blue collar Biloxi work, work ethic um, that I think is still with me today. Um, one of the other major influencers in my life was uh, Coach uh, Seacool. Uh, I was fortunate to play for him at Mississippi Gulf Coast uh, Community College. Uh, we contended for, we won two state championships, but we also contended for a national championship and got real close. But uh, they taught me hard work and what it takes to, to be a, a, a good ball player and a good team player. And uh, I think some of you also in, in this room may have played for him as well. Um, went to Mississippi State, uh, married my my wife, Lisa, uh, we've been married for 35 years. Uh, I have two children, uh, Ken and Tony, and I got two grandchildren, grandsons, and I got a granddaughter on the way in April. Um, I got into the hospitality industry, uh, working for Ed Bozier over at the Travel Lodge in Biloxi, Hook, Line, and Sinker. Uh, got involved with the Hotel and Lodging Association. Uh, one of the big influencers in my career there was uh, Billy Creel. He's no longer with us, but uh, he was at the Hilton. Uh, I was sandwiched in between the Hilton and the Royal D'Iberville. Uh, Paula April was basically running the uh, Royal D'Iberville. Billy was running the Hilton. I had this little bitty hotel in the, in the middle that I was managing for Ed Bozier, and they would send the overflow uh, from big conventions and everything. They taught me the ropes. Uh, later, I worked with Tina uh, with Gulf Shores, Inc. We had five Holiday Inn properties on the Mississippi Gulf Coast. And uh, so I've been in that hospitality industry and I view my role as a councilman kind of similar. You know, guests have wants and needs and they, they come to you and what their expectations are and I view my constituency the same way. They have wants and needs and my, my goal is to make sure that they are satisfied and I can exceed their expectations. A um, little bit about Ward, Ward 6 over the last five years anyway. I'm, I'm proud of a few accomplishments and I'll talk about a few. Uh, we passed a TIF uh, bond uh, for the area that was able to bring in uh, a Walmart uh, in the area, and I think it's been an economic driver. It's uh, certainly satisfied a need for a lot of the residents in that area. We are now working on uh, LZ Drive uh, to connect it uh, to Medical Parkway, and that's going to become a real big commercial corridor. Uh, there, so it's uh, really going to drive economic development, but that TIF bond that we passed is uh, helping finance some of the infrastructure and the roads to be able to open up that corridor and kind of create the synergy uh, in that area. So expectation is real big things will come, you know, to that area. Uh, another project, and it was probably 20 years, was dredging of the canals along North Haven on all the waterfront homes that the canals had silted in over the years. Uh, we are now dredging those canals, making them navigable, making that property more valuable so that the uh, citizens in that area and the owners can now use that waterfront property. Uh, there was a road in the area when I first was elected and we had a little bit of money left in a paving bond. Uh, it was Wetzel Drive. It was kind of a gravel dirt road. It was the only city-owned ro road in my ward that was not paved. And so I went to the administration. I said, this is the road I want to pave. And we paved it. And there was a lot of people that questioned that. Why are you paving a road? There's only three houses down there. And now if you ride down Wetzel, 
you have uh, a lot of homes that have been built. When you first turn in, there's about uh, eight homes that is newly built and occupied. If you ride down at the end of Wetzel, there's a new development called the Peninsula. And it's actually a peninsula with great water, waterfront views. Um, some of that land's going for a quarter of a million dollars just for the, for the property before they build the homes. But there's people that are buying those homes now. I talked to one of the homeowners yesterday, and he's really excited to uh, locate uh, into the peninsula. So that's, that's a real big deal. Um, and then you have other development like the Blake. It's a retirement home. It's going to be an upscale retirement home. It's certainly going to fit a need. It's something Biloxi is going to be really, really proud of. Right across the street from it, and I talked to some of the firefighters when I was elected. They were living out of a temporary trailer that was mole-ridden. And when I visited, they were really distraught and aggravated, saying, yeah, when are you going to uh, help us get out of this trailer? And I said, I'll go to work on it. And with the help of the media, with uh, pushing the administration, with the help of uh, my colleagues on the council, uh, we finally got some funding, put it in place, and if you drive down there, you'll see a new fire station being built. And they're going to get out of that trailer, they're going to have a first class fire station to work out of, and in addition, we added a training center there that they can train. We've had to send them to Jackson. We've had to send them to other areas to do their training. Cost about $3,000 a firefighter. We can now do that in Biloxi and save that money and train our own to be the best of the best. And in addition, what that fire station means for the city of Biloxi, all citizens, not just the uh, Ward 6, but as we now put that fire station in operation, it'll be a battalion style fire station it's going to be able to serve and reduce the time for our firefighters to respond to emergency events. It reduces commercial insurance all across Biloxi. It uh, reduces residential, residential insurance a little bit. And, you know, the bottom line, it gives our firefighters the best of the best, and that's reflective of Biloxi. We, we're the greatest city in the state of Mississippi and along the Gulf Coast, and, and we should reflect that and our firefighters, our police, and everything that we did. So uh, that's a few of the things. Uh, I mean, there's many, many more things that we work on. This, this council has worked tremendously hard. You got a very hardworking mayor, uh, very proud of Mayor Gillich. Uh, he's rolled up his sleeves, and uh, he certainly has the energy, as uh, you all can see, and uh, there's no grass that grows under his feet. And we certainly, I think, uh, over the last few years, we've finally been able to keep up with his, uh, his tempo and, and how fast he talks, and we've been finally able to interpret it. And it's easier for me, because I kind of got some Croatian roots, so I can you know, pick up on some of his dialect and everything. So with that, I'll open it up to any questions. Y'all have any questions for me? New fire stations on Pops Ferry Road. Uh, right across from the Blake at, at basically the corner of Cedar Lake and Pops Ferry Road, near the Innovative Center. That's it. All right, I want, I want to, uh, before I close, I do want to talk uh, about uh, short-term rentals a little bit. Uh, I know that was a, a question that was uh, asked and all that kind of stuff. Uh, you know, listen, uh, if, if it's in commercial, if it's zoned commercial, you're allowed. Uh, to put short-term rentals. If it's uh, zone multifamily, it's conditional use, and I know uh, Dr. Tisdale talked about that a little bit, meaning you have to prove to the uh, Planning Commission why short-term rental would work. You know, if, and for me, the test is if there's a lot of residents that we represent that are opposing it and they don't want short-term rentals intruding on their neighborhood and they make the case for that, that's certainly a test for me. If there's a lot of the residents that are for it, and there's a commercial uh, zoned around the particular establishment, in my view, that tilts uh, in, in favor of uh, looking favorably on short-term rentals. Single-family homes, it's not it, 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 you can't apply for it. It's not allowable. Now, the ordinance, uh, I think the Planning Commission Executive Committee is looking at tweaking it and putting some teeth in it so that we in ensure that they are insured properly because a lot of these folks, they just, it's residential insurance and they don't have the proper commercial coverage because they don't tell their agent. It's just my home, I'm gonna do what I want with it, I'm gonna rent it, and then there's tremendous uh, liability, not only for the owner, 
but the city of Bluxa, I believe, talking to our attorney, uh, could bear some risk if something happened and they were not properly insured. Um, the tourism taxes that we collect to bring visitors here, I'm in the tourism industry, I'm not opposed uh, at all to short-term rentals. They're part of our lodging family, and if they're uh, properly operating, I think uh, we should have as many as the market uh, could stand. But we do collect a 12% tax that we market the area, we attract visitors to the Mississippi Gulf Coast, and if we're attracting those visitors and they're going into a short-term rental that is not paying that lodging tax, that's unfair. And we gotta ensure that if you are a lodging establishment and you're renting your, uh, your short-term rental for those purposes, then that tax should be collected so that we can continue to market the Mississippi Gulf Coast and have more visitors coming to the area. So that's, that's uh, my two cents on short-term rentals. And I'll end that win with that if y'all don't have anything else. Thank y'all. Oh, I'm sorry. Who did I miss? Uh, Mr. Colonel. Yes. Length of time for uh, short-term rentals is less than 30 days. Yep, less than 30 days. Okay, thank you for the question. Thank y'all. My name is Nathan Barrett, and I represent Ward 7, and I promise you I won't take as long as Kenny took. Uh, my ward uh, is the largest in the city of the Bul Biloxi, and it's also the newest area in the city of Biloxi. The majority of Ward 7 was annexed about 20 years ago. <laughs> um, we were annexed about 20 years ago, the majority of the ward, and uh, up until a few years ago, nothing was really done in the ward. And so I could talk all day about what we have going on, but um, just to make it really brief, we have over a million dollar sidewalk project going on this year. We have a new fire station going in on Old 67 just to the east of um, Cedar Lake and Hudson Cron Road. We have a new library that we just had a ribbon cutting for that we partnered with the county. The city bought the building. The county um, <clears throat> paid to have the library relocated. Um, and we're doing a $250,000 renovation to the additional part of that building, which will be a community center for the Wool Market Ward 7, uh, North Biloxi area. And that'll be, that's going to be taking place this year as well. In addition to that, um, uh, my ward stretches from basically, if you go just north of Walmart, uh, Wells Ferry Landing, everything north of the interstate all the way to the city of Gulfport and then everything south of the interstate at the Wool Market exit which encompasses Eagle Point and all the Oak Lawn and all those areas. So it's a very large ward and up um, until now we didn't have one park in the city limits um, and this year we will start a 1.2 million dollar construction on a six and a half acre park in Eagle Point as well as a park that will go in at the new fire station on the east end of the ward. So. I don't know that they'll be completed this year, but we will have two parks that are started in Ward 7 this year, so that's a big step. As in addition to the sidewalks, um, we applied for and received about a $1.1 million grant of federal funding, and uh, until last year, we didn't have any sidewalks on public roads in uh, Wool Market and Ward 7, and so that's a, something that's much needed, especially with the growth that we have going on in Ward 7. It's, it's, it's just crazy if you go out there the amount of uh, new rooftops that are going in in Ward 7. Um, in addition to that, uh, we've done a lot of paving recently. The county and the city just partnered to repave Lorraine Road from the uh, Wool, Wool, four-way stop at Wool Market Road and Lorraine Road all the way to the new bridge, which was much needed. You came off the bridge and it's real nice and smooth and it was like you were in a third world country. And um, so we just partnered with the county on that, repaid that, and re um, replaced some much needed culverts that were collapsing and just it was constantly just having to be patched. Uh, the Cedar Lake Road north of the Cedar Lake Bridge all the way to Highway 67 is being paved right now uh, and some work is being done to that. And additional work will be done to that to raise up that area that always goes underwater when it just sprinkles a little bit as well. So that's uh, under construction now. We just went online with a um, one and a half million dollar water project in the Larkin subdivision off of Wool Market Road. 
and brought 130 something residents, uh, water and sewer that didn't have it before. That whole subdivision was just repaved. We just finished that. Um, we just voted yesterday to approve a contract, a $2 million drainage project for the east end of Wool Market Road. And for any of you who are familiar with that, um, you know that anytime it rains, it's it's like a major flood over there. It's it's a it's a very big issue that we face, and so um, that's going to be a big relief for the whole east end of our ward and that Wool Market uh, Wool Market Road area, Highway 67. Anytime it rains, that's where the news goes because that's the worst flooding in the city. And so um, that, that's, a, that's a really big thing. So I think um, just out of that uh, bond that we approved yesterday, $14 million, around four to four and a half million dollars of that is going to Ward 7 to do a lot of these projects. So we're excited about that. And um, I think that's about everything that, that I have going on right now. And, and I, I would like to speak for just a second about the short-term rentals. And I sort of am on the same page Kenny is. Um, I travel a lot, and if, if you look around, businesses that don't make adjustments to do what the market are doing, they go out of business, like Kmart and Sears. They didn't see the vision that some of these other companies saw. And because of that, they got behind the ball, and they failed. And if we don't do what the rest of the country is doing on some of these issues, we're going to see the same results. And so we have to get it right. I agree with Paul. We have to make sure that we have a set of ordinances and rules and things that these guys apply by. But if we're going to be a tourism town, a lot of tourists, that's what they seek now. And so we have to make that available to them and, uh, you know, to continue to grow and grow and to grow as a, a tourism city. And whatever those adjustments are, you know, it's something that we all have to sit down and agree on. I understand that. But it is a part of the future of, of you know, the way that people stay whenever they travel to tour, tourist towns. So I believe that it's important that we get our stuff together as quickly as possible when it comes to short-term rentals because that is a part of, you know, the future for traveling. So if you have any questions, I'll be happy to answer them. Yes, ma'am. A lot. <laughs> I, d I don't know a number, but um, I will tell you um, that whenever I was running for office, there's approximately 5,300 mailboxes in Ward 7. And that, that includes apartment complexes and, and everything like that, uh, trailer parks and everything. But that's 5,300 mailboxes. If you take the average of three people living at each mailbox, that's well over 15,000 people in a 45,000 uh, people city, uh, resident city and so you know you can do the math real quick and that's about one third or you know at least a quarter of of what we have in the city of Biloxi so with that being said I believe that whenever the census comes out um, you know our ward lines will have to be re redrawn because you have to have an equal uh, number of residents or close to an equal number of residents in the wards but it, it's growing really fast we probably have 10 subdivisions being built right now in the ward and and that's there's a lot of reasons it's a, it's a desirable area um, and the insurance is cheaper here than other places you're safe from the safe from the storms and so th there's a lot of factors that um, that that play into that but yeah we have we have a lot of new rooftops going in right now and, and another thing I'd like to mention just off the exit um, north of the the exit we have a, a new little three um, unit strip mall that went in and we're getting a subway which is our first fast food type restaurant and uh, Jimmy Perkins um, from Waffle House is back here and I've been on him for months we're trying to get a, a Waffle House uh, at the Wool Market exit <laughs> I, I will keep you in business I promise um, but um, but you know that's exciting and so and the roundabouts, that's, that's a sore subject for the people that live out in Woolmarket. But I've been talking to MDOT, and MDOT is working a plan to acquire a little bit of that property around that to make those bigger and light the area up and stuff. So there is a plan in, work, in the works for that. And, um, you know, as anybody knows that, that's dealt with government, the wheels of government don't turn super fast. And so we want it done yesterday. 
um, and you know, but but there is some motion going in, in that, and so hopefully we we um, get something on that as far as that goes. But as far as the rooftops, yes, we have a lot of new homes going in. I don't know the number. Jerry Krill could answer that, but I don't know the exact number of how many we have going in. Anybody else? Yes, ma'am. Can you what? Absolutely. Thank you, and, and and that is a um, and I should have covered that more. That that's a great addition to our community. Um, Connie Rocco, after the storm, she she facilitated getting that trailer and things in there. And then when we bought that building, Connie and I were having lunch one day and we're just brainstorming, and they were considering building a library. And so we knew what we were going to do with half of that building, which it was going to be a community center, but we didn't know what we were going to do with the other half. We had kicked around putting a, a gym in and things like that for the residents and uh, we came up with that idea and the county put I think around a hundred thousand dollars into that and they're gonna I believe put about another hundred thousand into it when it's all said and done in addition to us buying the building for 250 and then um, you know we're putting an additional 250 or something like that into it so the building when it's all said and done will have close to a million dollars in it but it's a great addition for our community and with that being said, and I think all the council people will agree with this, we right now have a great partnership with the county and uh, partnering with the county and between us and them, you know, going in halves on a lot of projects and stuff, we're getting a lot of things accomplished that in the past we haven't. And it's very important, not just that the city works together, that the city and the county works hand in hand. And because of that, um, we, we we're accomplishing a lot and and mike leonard just walked into the room and he's one of the ones that's behind the scene helping make that happen as far as the um the city county relationship um, working out those deals to get the roads paved and things like that any other questions all right i'll pass it on to felix good morning, good morning. all right I, I think i'm it I'm Felix Gans. I'm the uh, councilman for Ward 2 in Biloxi. And just like most of my colleagues, I'm in my second term. And of course, uh, here in the city of Biloxi, my ward has been a major challenge. My ward line start from, most of you probably know Lee Street, probably about seven streets over. And it go all the way to Keesla. It takes in Keesla Air Force Base. And then when we get on the other side of Keesla, between Pass Road and the railroad tracks, we go all the way down to Lady Fatima. So it's pretty big. And it's very, very diverse. And we've also had a lot of challenges. The first thing I'm gonna talk about is the construction. That's been our biggest challenge. As you know, we had Katrina a couple of years ago. Katrina took us down pretty good. We lost the most homes. And I'm speaking for Ward 1 George Lawrence uh, area also. We lost the most homes, we lost the most people, and it's been a real big challenge. With the economic downturn coming right behind it, then we had the BP oil spill, it's slow construction. So that has been a very big challenge. We were lucky because we received a $355 million grant to redo our infrastructure. And that took, a, there was a few bumps in the road in that area. $355 million, what does that do? We're gonna change out our water lines, change out our streets, repave every street. We're gonna do our uh, total infrastructure. 
sewer lines and everything. But it, it, it took a big hit, and that's been our biggest challenge. Um, we had a group, uh, a construction company, that kind of been slow. We actually are supposed to finish this project January 1st, and now we're in the process of, of finding them because they are slow. But things are uh, slowly coming. We brought in uh, the guy that did, uh, Jimmy Lane, who brought in, who did uh, Pops Ferry Road, and he has moved things forward. And so now our community is starting to shape up. It's starting to shape up a lot. Matter of fact, this weekend, we had a second line of parade. And we had, the masses came out. People came back to the community. So that's one of the biggest bright spots of our community is seeing the resurgence of the War II community coming back. The next thing I want to talk about is our parks. Henry Beck Park. Nathan and, and most of uh, my colleagues talked about our partnership with the county. Uh, Ms. Beverly Martin is our supervisor, and she came in and put a beautiful big splash pad in our community, or in our park, Henry Beck Park in particular. So that has turned out to be a great asset for our kids during, during the summer, and it gives them some place to go. Sherry Bell also put in new basketball goals, something we were without for a long time. As you know, again, Katrina destroyed a lot of things. We had no recreation facilities. We had no parks and no places for our kids to go. So now we got a, a splash pad, we have basketball courts, and we also are on the verge of putting bathrooms in Henry Beck Park and also in uh, Bush Park. And those are, are areas that are constantly growing. Um, the hospital did a study about the fastest growing area along the coast. 39530. 39530 is my area. That is one of the fastest growing areas in, in our community on the coast. And we're proud of that because we know that we're slowly, slowly coming back. And one of the things that's going to really, really help us is the Keesla Gate project. The, we're moving the Keesla Gate from Forest Avenue, which is way down to the, closer to the uh, bay. And we're going to move it to the end of Division Street that's gonna open up a lot of traffic flow. And when we talk about businesses, businesses need traffic flow. So with Keesler Gate moving to Division Street, it's gonna open up a lot of things. I've been fortunate to be able to go to DC with our mayor and petition for the 25 million that we got to do that. And, and that was a, a, a fabulous process. And knowing that Keesler is in with us and they are doing a, a great partnership with the city of Biloxi. Everything we do, and now we got an air show coming along. We, we've been so proud of that partnership, and everything has been going smooth, and it's been unlike no other. But that's going to help us quite a bit. Downtown Biloxi, this is my ward too, right here where we're sitting. The resurgence of downtown, that's the mayor's baby. Uh, as you can look down, uh, uh, we got the bricks coming through the Vieux Marche, opening it wide open. That's a project that's been on the table a long time. If some of you guys remember Delmar Robinson, that was one of the things that he wanted to do. Delmar was a mentor of mine with the Biloxi Housing Authority. And his thing was to open the V Marche back up, rebrick it. The mayor took that on as a challenge, and he's opening it back up. Not only opening it back up, but recruiting people to put businesses down there. And that's the thing. As you look around the downtown Biloxi area over the past 10 years, it's growing, and it's growing massively. And with that opening, I only had one complaint about it. Uh, one lady told me, why did you have to paint the bricks? And I said, <laughs> I said hey, we got to have parking. We got to have parking. So that was uh, a great thing. And one of the things that we also have uh, coming is another community center. Uh, we did a bond just not long ago, um, a $14 million bond, and I wanted a place for our kids to go, have a center as we had once before. Before the storm, we had three community centers. Now we have really none. And now, uh, for the first time, we have money set aside to go ahead and build a facility. Working with our partners, Ms. Beverly Martin, our supervisor, we've located some land, which is the old baseball stadium. 
where there's a lot of land there. And we're going to try to go ahead and put up a facility for our kids, an indoor facility. Uh, right now, we're using the old Mercy Cross building, which is very, very uh, uh, dilapidated. And we need a good facility for them to play, a safe place to play. And we, the Boys and Girls Club now are using it. And you know, we don't want our people, we're Biloxi, we don't want our people in, in rundown buildings. We want to look good when we want to look right. And we're going to go ahead and get that put up in the next couple of years, as soon as Oscar and get on out the way. <laughs> so anyway, with that being said, uh, uh, we've experienced some growth. People are coming back. And I'm proud of the area that, that I represent. I'm proud of this downtown area. Uh, the resiliency of our people going through what they've been through the last 10 or 12 years. And I always say, I took three years off my life dealing with Oscar Renda. So now, you know, now that I can uh, raise up out of the dust clouds and, and see a resurgent community, uh, I'm just proud to say that uh, our community in Biloxi is back. Do I have any questions? <laughs> Don't raise your hands at once. <laughs> Gordon, I'll go Gordon first. That was the first thing I done uh, when I when I got it, when I got in the office. I tasked uh, Kay Miller and the downtown uh, Biloxi Main Street, and I actually sent the actual uh, uh, promo to you guys, and and allow you guys to get involved with uh, with me. We actually have uh, identified a couple of grocery stores to come on in, and as you know, we did uh, uh, my initial plan was the Calvet Main Street. Uh, Calvet and Division Street corner where we were looking at putting a, a grocery store. Of course, you guys redesigned it a little bit differently, but uh, all's the same. Uh, Aldi's is probably, um, you know, Aldi's was one of them that we were trying to target. Uh, well, I'm not supposed to say names. Uh, one of the grocery stores has that, that we targeted. And, uh, you know, uh, it's, it's a process that's working. And if you get with me later, I can tell you where we are in the process on that grocery store, but it's still a, um, a priority on my list. Uh, and again, with Kiesler Gate coming down Division Street, that's going to open it up and, gonna, uh, and that's going to allow us to get that traffic flow that we need for things like a, a grocery store. And that's the key to having a business, traffic flow. Yeah. Gene? And I think that's the plan. The plan is to open it up once things are, are done. You know, and of course, we, 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 I would love to see it as a, our Mardi Gras route again. That's, that's, that's the biggest thing. But the plans are, I believe, are to do that. Uh, just a, when the construction is finished, which could be anywhere between guys. What, Oh, the children's spray, okay. Okay, they, they don't have a date, but I, I figure within the next six months or less. Hey, I'm going all the way out there. <laughs> yes, Colonel. That has been put in the plans. It's been put in the plans. It was passed yesterday. Um, I think it's 1.5 million to, to, to set aside. Now we haven't uh, moved it forward yet, but that's been set aside for the single theater. And that's the a cornerstone of, of the downtown area. We need that. In my opinion, we need it because it's, it's the cornerstone of bringing back uh, the downtown Biloxi area. So, uh, but that has been addressed, and 1.5 million 
right off the side uh, to start that renovation process. When will it start? We don't have a date on it, but we know we have set it aside. So we don't have a date on it yet. I know it'll be pretty soon, though, pretty soon. It's been closed for what, about a year and a half now? Year and a half, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, hope. I know, I know. But we are on it. We are on it. We are on it. Anything else? Yes. Yeah, I'll take the second one first. Um, we've just passed an incentive for, for housing, and that's out there on our website uh, for people who want to build and also people who want to buy and renovate. And, and there's a process that we have, uh, uh, there's an application process out there to receive an incentive for you to build and, and come back. As you know, uh, the challenges we have in our community is elevation. And so it costs you a little bit more because you have to go a little bit higher. Uh, we just passed that, uh, I think about a month or two ago, uh, to give an incentive for people who want to build and also people who want to buy. What we did is from Forest Avenue all the way to uh, Keller Avenue and from uh, pretty much from the beach to the bay. Uh, that whole area falls into that uh, that area for that for that grant and so you have an opportunity if you do that that will give you incentives to go ahead and build as far as the downtown uh, the main street area um yes the the pink building which what you're talking about there's a, a historical house in that area and that's been addressed once the street is finished and we have jimmy lane which is one of our fastest contractors going through there um there's been two or three people who, who is talking about buying that building and restoring it. I know there are several people who talked about tearing it down, but we want to try to preserve it uh, as best we could because that is still the corner. That's a that's, uh, historical landmark, and that area has been uh, vital to our growth. And it, there's a lot of history there, and, and we want to preserve it. And we, we've identified the owner also. Interest is always good, but action is better. <laughs> uh, maybe about the three million. I think we averaged it out to about three million award. Anyone else? Yes. When, they told us yesterday that that was no longer on the market, so we don't know what the status right. is. Right. It's no longer on the market. We don't know the status. We, we, they, they just told us it was off the market. So there may be some development there, but we don't have a clue to what it is yet. That's a good start. 
Yeah, always and a good sign when it someone wasn't for sale or yeah. lease, and it's it's not available anymore. So, yeah, so we have no possibly. Clue. We don't we don't know. We have no feedback. Anything else? Okay, thank you guys. All right, uh, I'm, I'm sitting there thinking, I said, it's about not a better opportunity to plug it again. Uh, Felix is talking about developing the downtown area, and it's a focus of uh, Mayor Gillich's area. And, and really, I get the question all the time of, you know, I'm the VP of the Economic Development Committee. Well, what, you know, how, did, how does it relate to economic development? Well, this, the, the, the pub crawl, um, poker run that we have really is our way of promoting economic development. He's talking about the, the, the growth of that area and the beautification of that area, and that's one way that we can promote that, push people down there, let them walk the streets, let them see what's going on down there, the businesses that are there, support the businesses, that'll bring in more business. I say all that to say, please buy a ticket to the poker run. It's our first year. We want it to be successful. Um, <clears throat> you can get in touch with any of the board members uh, of the Bucksby Area Chamber. I got two tickets on me if anybody wants any. It's it's wa walking, bicycling, both. Uh, yeah, yeah. So <laughs> yeah, it's very very doable, um, and and you can you can tell me if I'm not speaking out of turn. But you buy the twenty dollar ticket, and you're not obligated to fork out any other money that night. You just go in the places, see see the places. We're trying to get people in the door. Uh, it's going to start at uh, one the new venue one thirty one. Um, and, and they're brand new. We just did the ribbon cutting. So we're wanting to push people in here to promote this business, to, to revitalize the downtown area because we'll all benefit from it. Um, that was my spiel. I'll get off of there. But I, I'll go into, again, I want to thank all the council members. They, they, they've agreed to this every year now. This is the third year. It's our, our best attended event, and um, we were really thankful for them. I want to thank Mark Seymour again with Seymour Engineering. He, he, he stepped up. This is the second year in a row he stepped up to. <clears throat> That's awesome. It really take, takes a lot of the pressure off of, of getting all this together. Uh, and Dixie Newman again with Jacked Up Coffee. We really appreciate it. Um, thank all of, you know, my council members for helping us out uh, and, and Tina. Um, but I guess that's about all I got. I, I, I won't keep y'all any longer. Thank y'all all for coming out and, uh, and keep up with the, the newsletter. There's a lot of good mo uh, free events that, that our chamber puts together, and that's really how we provide value to the members uh, and, and support our, our, our local uh, businesses. So thank y'all. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. Motion to adjourn. Motion adjourn. So moved. Move, second, second by Tisdale. All in favor? Yeah. All right. Tisdale.